Hello again, YouTube land. Um, so, it's Monday. And it's raining out, and it's colder than it's been the last few days, and my neighbors are making noise out in the hall. So, last week, I posted a composite project um, about the food truck rally. And it was fun, and it was good. I guess not too many people were interested in watching it, but whatever. Um, what else? Sam and I, for a long time now, have been talking about getting a second animal. And we went to the same place we adopted <clears throat> Tribble from, as a kitten. And we were looking around, looking around. And we agreed we didn't want to get someone older than Tribble. Because she's been here since she was a kitten. It's her house. She gets to be the older cat. She gets to be in charge. But your best policy when adopting animals and bringing new animals into a house with animals is gender alternation. So Tribble's a girl. The suggested practice is bringing home a boy. And that's fine, but when we went this weekend, there was only one who came reasonably close to meeting those expectations. And he was a beautiful cat, also a domestic short hair like Tribble, very friendly and quiet, um, gorgeous gray and white stripe domestic short hair. But he was the only one that came within at least the age limit. So, we were looking around, and the location we went to for this particular shelter called Bobby and the Strays is kind of like this, I don't know if it's the secondary location, but they have a large location out on Long Island, and this is the smaller one that's in Queens. And the one on Long Island, we've never been to. I'm not completely sure why, but we've never been to that one. But while we were at the smaller one this weekend, um, we were looking around at all of the animals, the dogs and the cats. And I guess I had never been completely clear with Sam on the fact of, of how things work with me and animals. He always had dogs. I've always had cats. Now, you would think that would be a problem in many relationships, except the combined interest we share is having an animal in the house. We like having pets around, we like having animals around, we like sharing our living space with them. And the truth of the matter is I don't function well without four-legged friends in the house. And I kept saying to him before we got ready to go, every time it was mentioned in conversation actually, you know, we'll be getting trouble uh, a sibling, you know, and we'll see who's there. It might be a sibling who's a cat, it might be a sibling who's a puppy, we don't know. We haven't met everyone yet. So while we were there, um, there were these beagle puppies. I'm guessing five or six months old, because they were in a separate cage from mom, so, and they had their own food and water dishes, so obviously they were weaned. Um, and the manager who was there said that of the five in the litter, the two boys had been adopted. There were only the three girls left. So we met one of the little girls. Her name is Harper. And she's so cute. Oh, she's so cute. And in my life, I've never had a dog. I've never had a dog. But I have nothing, as I've said before, I have nothing against dogs. What I have is never met one I shared an interest in living with. You know, like I never met one who was friendly with me right from the get go, who I took an equal liking to and was interested in, in sharing a home with. But I feel differently about Harper. And the manager warned us. She said, you know, quite a few people have submitted applications for them because they were posted on our website. So there's, you know, things I have to go through and, and check to see what would be the best fit. So...
We don't know for sure if she'll be coming home with us. <sighs> Which is upsetting, but understandable, because, you know, if there's someone who's going to be home all the time, like me, but who, instead of us, you know, lives in a house with a nice big fenced-in yard and everything, I kind of get why that place would would get preference but you know the stupid part to me is that my dad when I told him where we were and what we were doing he said really because you guys live in an apartment okay but you know what that logic barely made sense to me when I was a kid and they promised me a puppy that I never got but now I'm older I've been living back in New York for s almost seven years now and New York is one of those metropolitan capitals where the size of the space you have doesn't really have a huge amount to do with what kind of pets you own. I mean, apartment-wise, our place is really kind of on the big side for a New York apartment. I mean, granted, what we pay per month for rent, depending on where you look, could be a house payment, but that's true of almost all of New York, and we certainly pay less than you would for something half the size in Manhattan because we're in Queens. So, <sighs> for someone to turn around and say, oh, well, but you guys live in an apartment. Dogs do better with yards. Okay, well, humans do better with space to roam. And we live cramped into apartment buildings stacked 6, 10, 30 stories high. That that's your best natural state doesn't mean it's the state you have, and it doesn't mean that that's the only good life you could possibly live in. You know? I don't know. I'd like it if Harper, this adorable little beagle puppy, could come home with us. But I agree with the point of shelters that, you know, if, if you can find the best fit, the best pairing for the animal, that's the goal. I don't know. Like I said, she, so far, she's the first dog I've, I've felt enough of an initial bond with to want to spend time. And, you know, the other thing about it is that Sam and I don't travel much. And more and more days now, there are places that are pet-friendly. There are pet-friendly hotels, you know. And the only places we travel are twice a year to my parents' house. And I'll grant you. In my parents' house, my Aunt Janet, who also lives there, has a cat. But she's a shelter cat. She, you know, she was brought home from a shelter. There's no reason to assume she wouldn't get along with a well-trained dog. And she's been in the house when my stepbrother Sean's dog has been in the house. And she hasn't really had a problem. And, and my stepbrother's dog is like a pit bull. Like a full-size grown very friendly, don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking ill of the dog, it's a very friendly dog, but she's a big breed dog, and even as a friendly dog, she's still a lot bigger than the cat, and the cat knows where its bread is buttered, so it spends most of its time when the dog's in the house, upstairs in Aunt Janet's room. So if our dog, if she becomes our dog, or if we adopt a dog, comes with us, there's no reason to think she'll have a huge problem being in the house, you know? And for that matter, there's no reason we couldn't bring a portable kennel if she needs to stay in a kennel at night so that she's not, you know, getting herself in trouble wandering around and such. I don't know. But even if the dog stayed here, we have friends in the city who have dogs. We have friends who are professional dog walkers. We get along with our neighbors. There's no reason to think that if it was necessary, we couldn't ask someone to to check on her, to walk her. You know, they, they come and they help us with Tribble the two times a year we ever go anywhere. But that's a whole separate, I wish we traveled more kind of thing. I mean, it's not likely to happen, so... Why cry over spilt milk that doesn't exist? 
But that was the big thing of the last week since the food truck rally. Really. Was going to the shelter and meeting Harper. So. I don't know. It's only been, let's say Monday. Two days since we were there. A day since we were there. I don't even remember which day we went. Saturday or Sunday. I think it was... Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday, because yesterday we went to the flea market and Sam got all happy slappy because we tripped over a table of Girl Scouts selling cookies at a local flea market. So for the first time in like 15 years, I have thin mint cookies in the fridge, and I'm happy. <laughs> One of the few things that can lift a fat girl's spirits is an unexpected luxury treat food item. And for me, the Girl Scout cookies are, because I was never a Girl Scout. I wasn't allowed to be that social as a kid. So. I don't know. Fingers crossed, as far as Harper goes. But she, you know, I mean, she's, they're all very nice puppies, and I know Harper has a good personality, because I got to hold her for a while. And I think she'd be a good fit here, because I was covered in triple smell. I mean, when you own a cat, you understand this. You're covered in your animal scent. And we hug her before we leave, every time we go somewhere. So I know there was, you know, right here there was triple smell. And that's where I was holding Harper. And she just could not stop kissing my face. She was licking at me. She was snuggling into me. She was sniffing at Sam and giving him kisses. And, and we're both covered in cats, so she's obviously not got a problem with the smell of cat. She may, as a puppy, not be that familiar with it, but it doesn't make her cross, it doesn't make her aggressive. And when we came home, just to be safe, I laid my shirt out on the bed um, where Tribble likes to nap, and she got a good whisker full, and she just kind of looked at it and went, eh. And that was the end of it. Like, she, she knows what dog smell is. I know other people have been here with the smell of dog on them, including us. And she just kind of went, whatever. So, that gives me a pretty clear basis for believing they'd get along. And Tribble is an indoor cat, but she has all of her claws. I mean, if necessary, she'd be able to gently, with my help, teach any puppy that came to live with us, you know, I was here first. You know, even as the longer I talk about it, I can tell I'm kind of getting myself too high a hope. Because there's, like I said, there's no promise that it's going to happen. There's no promise that we're going to be chosen from however many people submitted an application for this particular puppy. But I guess hope springs eternal. So as soon as we know, I'll let you know. But if you have a chance to go to a shelter and have such an experience where you find an animal that you bond with, I suggest you do it because it's good for everyone involved. The shelter, you, the animal. There's nothing but winning going on there. <sighs> All right. Whatever I have on the TV screen is flashing and confusing me, so <laughs> I should go turn it off. I'll talk to you guys next time.